Moving on to item 4.2, roll call. Board member Rodriguez Pena, present. Board member Shilonin Cruz Gonzalez, here. Board member Arianes, here. And board president Adrian Greer, here. And I, Sabrina Bo, am here. Um, item 4.3, approval of the agenda. May I have a motion to approve 4.3? Make a motion to approve 4.3. And is there a second? Moved by board member Rodriguez Pena and seconded by board member Arianes. Have a vote. Can, can we do a hand vote? Yeah, let's go ahead and do a hand vote. Board member Rodriguez Pena? Yes. Uh, board member Cruz Gonzalez? Yes. Board member Arianes? Yes. Board member Greer? Yes. And board member Bo is a yes. The agenda is approved. Moving on to item 5.0, report and action of closed session matters. Um, may I have a motion? Make a motion to approve 5.1. Board, board vice president, uh, 5.1. No, just we're on, uh, moving to 5.1. Oh, pardon me. Okay. May I have a motion? Uh, or 5.1. Make a motion to approve 5.1. Is there a second? Moved by board member Rodriguez Pena and seconded by board member Arianes. Have a vote. Board member Greer, are you able to Access electronically, or is, did he hop off? Okay, thank you so much. And the item passes 5-0. Moving on to item 6.0, items from the floor public comment on agenda or non-agenda agenda items. Uh, hope, do we have any blue cards tonight? Please go ahead. Nikki Carpenter, welcome. Thank you so much. Good evening, members of the board. Mickey Carpenter, I'm representing the city of Azusa and our community resource department. I am very uh, pleased to be here tonight with you. I'm so proud and grateful for the partnership uh, with Azusa Unified. Uh, really proud of the many activities that we've partnered in over the last several years, uh, from the amazing community festival that we just had about a month ago. Thank you so much for the AUSD showing. It was amazing. I will say, I think it was the most popular section of our festival. Um, the food, by the way, was fabulous. People are still talking about it. Mm -hmm. But just the, just the camaraderie that you showed was really fantastic and in perfect alignment with what the festival was all about genuinely really wanted to share my that. Um, also, the All In For Azusa initiative. Um, you may all be aware of the fact that we do have a community-driven initiative that the city does help facilitate. This is a state uh, model program, and it is in perfect alignment with your community schools initiative. So I just want to congratulate you for your work in that area and for, for embracing that model, actually, because it is truly um, on the cutting edge of where we need to be, where the city needs to be as well. And so we hope that we get to lock step with you uh, in that movement uh, moving forward because we have a lot of wonderful partners already on board. Uh, also really pleased to share um, again, the news of our um, federal uh, program allocation from Grace Napolitano, our Congresswoman's office. Um, to help support the establishment of a teen and family center uh, at the city of Azusa. So really, again, looking forward to partnering with you on that. Um, and finally, I also appreciate your consideration of our working together on summer programming this year. It is an agenda item later or in consent. Um, and again, you know how much I really, really appreciate um, all that you do and really, really enjoy serving our community. Uh, after all, we are serving mostly the same population. So it makes total sense that we would work together in that way. Uh, and I welcome the continued collaboration from here on out. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Mickey. It's nice to see you.
Leek, is there anyone in Zoom attendance for public comment? We have no hands raised on Zoom. Thank you. Moving on to item 7.1, comments, reports, and requests by the Board of Education. Board Member Rodriguez Pena. Yes, um, good evening, everyone. I just want to um, announce that this weekend I participated, and I know Board Member Cruz Gonzalez was also there, at the Juneteenth celebration. That's the first time that they had a Juneteenth celebration in the San Gabriel Valley. That was the first one, I should say. And uh, it was at Dalton Park. They had entertainment, performances, booths with many resources, activities for the whole family, and it was hosted by Supervisor Hilda Solis, First District. I um, Also, the uh, Azusa City Library, Last week was the first week of their summer reading program. The theme is Read Beyond the Beaten Path. I was honored to read a, child, a children's book, uh, one of my favorite books, on, um, on the community video website. The summer program will be at Memorial Park for all children from 1 to 18 years of age. Every Tuesday at 11 a.m., they will have special performances. On June 28th, they're going to have a musician. And on July 5th, farm to fresh avocado cooking demo. On July 12th, the party puppet show. And July 19th, Dr. Rusty's dinosaur safari. So I want to thank Leila, Leila Hassan um, for asking me to come and read that book, but also um, she is the library service manager. And she wants to thank AUSD and the amazing nutrition service team for providing the lunch during the lunch program. They're very happy for that. Um, also this weekend, the Collaboration Art Summer Camp will be having a world premiere of Empire of Light, collaboration of opera, chorus, and visual arts. It will be on Saturday, 2 p.m. at the APU Turner Building. And I wanna wish everyone a safe and happy summer. Thank you. Board Member Cruz Gonzalez. Thank you. Um, yes, I did attend the Juneteenth celebration on Saturday, and it was very wonderful to see. Um, they had some great um, performances, some great um, a great panel of local African American leaders, um, free food. It was it was a really well um, put together event. So really excited that we're, that you celebrated that here in Azusa. Um, and then just um, I, I do have a request. I really appreciate. Um, that Mickey's here to talk about some of the initiatives they, they do. And I know that we've been very active in all in Azusa, right? But I do want us to think about how do we how do we incorporate a lot of this momentum that already exists around like engaging and, and being community driven through this through a health lens um, that the, the city's already sort of laid the groundwork for. Um, um, and I think a lot of community members have been involved with over many years. Um, how we can how we can make it all be cohesive and and um, sort of supplement each or and support everything, right? I do want to say I think that there are opportunities for us to think beyond. Even I'm really, I'm really excited about this the item on that we have later on in the agenda. But and I'll speak to it at that point. But I, I do think we should think even we could think even bigger. Like we have, we now have a bunch of empty school sites, right? I've been in El Monte. They have a really cool bike track at one of the school sites. At what they they converted it into a nonprofit center, and they have a bike track, and they have. I went, I was in Pomona and there's a school site that has a big community garden right next to it that's run by a nonprofit. So I think there's opportunities for us to think about these opportunities, to think about what we can do, um, but it requires us to partner, right? And so I appreciate this first step and I, I hope it's be the beginning of many more partnerships between us, between us and the city and other nonprofits. So thank you. Board Member Aranis. I would, <clears throat> I would like to say good evening to everyone. And I would like to congratulate all of the students that took um, a graduation, a promotion, a certification. Um, I get really excited at graduation because it's a stepping, right? It's another step in this individual's life, regardless of uh, what degree or what they're getting, if they're promoting, if they're graduating a certification, it means a commencement, a new beginning. So congratulations to all the new beginnings, all our students in this district. You guys make it all worth it. It was a pleasure to be at all of your guys' graduations. So congratulations to all and all the families. Thank you for that. Um, I just want to just say this is the end of the year, right? This is our, our last meeting, uh, regular meeting of the year. 
and there's there's a lot to to discuss. I see a friendly face out there, um, and I'm I'm really excited to to just what's going to be coming up this next year. We have a lot, um, <clears throat> but looking forward to it. And Mickey, um, thank you for being here and your vision, your passion from 20 years ago. It's it remains, and I'm I'm very excited. Um, just like my colleague here said for Sousa Unified to partner up with um, parks and recreation in the city. So looking forward to, because you're right, we service the same individuals, right? These are our same families and why not team up together to be able to, pro to provide a more robust um, after school program, teen center. Like I'm really excited. I, I can't wait. I can't wait for all of this. So thank you. And thank you, cabinet. Board President Greer. I have no comment this evening. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to use my time to make a formal request of superintendent and cabinet for um, a, a background report on the benefits of full day TK and kindergarten. And if we could see that sometime in the fall, I think um, the back to school season is an appropriate time to start thinking about um, ways that we expand our programming in our AUSD 2.0. Now for item 8.0 and 8.1, Mr. Ortega. Thank you, uh, Board Vice President Bo. Uh, I am excited to announce our student board members uh, for the 22-23 uh, school year. Uh, those are going to be Natalie De La Cruz from Mazusa High School, uh, Carolina Dominguez from Gladstone High School, and Daphne Pineda from Sierra High School. And this year, I'm particularly looking forward. Uh, we are going to be attending the student board member program uh, together at the CSBA Leadership Institute uh, that's going to be taking place next month uh, with our student board members. So I'm looking forward to uh, beginning that relationship uh, with them at that point in time. Uh, unfortunately, Natalie uh, will not be able to join us because she is attending a very prestigious a uh, STEM uh, uh, opportunity out of uh, University of California, Irvine called Cosmos. And uh, we tried to ask and they said the attendance is really strict, um, but we'll, we'll catch her up on, on what we learned and what we went through at that uh, particular uh, program. Uh, this summer, I also plan uh, to once again, uh, call uh, at least 100 families in our district uh, to see how the 21-22 school year went. I uh, want to see if they are attending any uh, summer programming uh, and let them know that we're working really hard and uh, we're getting really excited, even though we just ended, uh, to welcome them to the 22-23 school year. Um, I have already started these phone calls and I am just very grateful uh, for the conversations, uh, the feedback, and the opportunity to connect with our families. Thank you. Good evening, Board of Education. I uh, My comments will be brief tonight. Um, summer break is a time for rest, uh, renovation, and renewal. And my hope is that everyone here, um, all of our staff, and of course, all of our students find time to, to really rest and, and get ready for the upcoming school year. Um, I do appreciate the um, work and the leadership that we we have here, and we're looking forward to some great year, uh, uh, some great things in 22-23. Good evening, board. Um, I would like to use my time to thank our physical service team. Um, in collaboration with Human Resources, we have successfully completed the retro. Um, I'm happy to announce that we'll be issuing the retro checks on Friday, um, June 21st, 24th, from 12 um, p.m. to 2 p.m. I want to remind all staff that you have to come in person. There's no direct deposit. Um, if you're not able to pick up your warrant, we are going to mail your warrant that same day to the address is printed on the check. But if you come in person, please bring a photo ID. Good evening. Good evening, board. Um, I had the opportunity to visit our SEAL Summer Bridge Professional Learning last week, and it was very exciting to see our teachers and students immersed in fully implementing. Um, a SEAL unit on the ocean. Um, and they 
shared a lot of positive feedback in terms of having the opportunity for job embedded coaching. Um, I got to see some modeling um, from one of our SEAL coaches. So it's been a, a great experience for all so far. Um, I also had a chance to speak with two of our middle school teachers who are utilizing the Camp Invention program. And they shared how much the students are enjoying those STEM activities and how engaged they are in that learning and how much they've been able to infuse um, into those um, um, opportunities because the kids are so engaged and wanna read and learn more. And Mr. Hartman shared some great pictures with kids building model runs today as well. So that's been um, exciting for our summer programming. Thank you. Moving on to section 9.0, general functions and 9.1, Presentation of the district's 2022 California School Dashboard Local Indicators, Ms. Garcia Medina. Can you hear me? Okay, perfect. And good evening, President Greer, board members, Superintendent Ortega, cabinet and audience. It's a pleasure to be here uh, with you again this week uh, to present um, the California School Dashboard Local Indicators for the 2022 school year. The state of California has been shifting timelines and requirements for the local indicators. Uh, and this year, uh, the local indicators are being presented to you on the same night that we're approving our LCAP. Uh, in the fall, we will upload the local indicators to the California School Dashboard, and we will also publish our indicators during the first week of December to make this a public viewing for our community. As you know, uh, the California Dashboard is part of the state's accountability system, and it allows uh, the public and our district to see the multiple measures that we're using uh, to address the eight state priorities um, that the state has outlined for us. And it shows us how we are measuring our progress towards meeting the needs of all our students. The next slide shows you the eight priorities that we have for educating our students. Um, we use these priorities to develop our district goals and also to determine uh, and guide our spending. Uh, additionally, there are accountability measures that are tied to each of these standards uh, that address these eight areas. We also look at these standards, uh, these priorities, the metrics, the progress in order to inform our LCAP process. The next slide shows you the two types of indicators that we have. We have our state, indicators and we have our local indicators. Our state indicators include data that's pulled directly by the state. It includes um, SPEC data, for example, uh, that's tied to performance levels. Uh, and this is all found on the dashboard. You see an image there that has four examples of what uh, the uh, data, how the data is reflected in a graphic form. Um, it groups performance uh, on each of the state measures uh, that's displayed by a gauge. Uh, it's broken up into five different color segments uh, that represent the five levels of performance. Uh, you'll see an arrow that's point, pointing to one of the colors and that uh, corresponds to the performance for that measure. Um, red would be your lowest performance indicator followed by orange, uh, yellow, green, and blue being the highest uh, performance indicator. And this is only for state indicators. We also have the local indicators on the right-hand side, and those are developed by the district using uh, self-reflection tools. Uh, and we report on progress in meeting uh, these state priorities as well. These uh, results are all uploaded to our California dashboard. Had this all day. A lot of talk. The next slide shows you um, the state priorities and the dashboard. Here you see uh, the eight priorities that are alongside of the matching indicator. And you can see that 
as we're reporting, we're reporting state indicators and local indicators. Um, you can see them side by side, and you'll see that there are two that are overlapping, the uh, school climate indicator and also the course access indicator. Um, the school climate, for example, it's data pulled by the state for, for example, sus suspension rate. Um, and then we also have local youth truth data that we're pulling here as a local indicator. So that's why you have uh, access on both um, areas. For course access, you'll see college uh, and career indicator. That's uh, data that's pulled by the state and that would be a state indicator. In addition to that, we also have a local indicator where we're measuring access to broad course of study for our students. The next slide shows you the landing page. This is what the California School Dashboard would look like if you were to go to the website. Um, and this shows the 2019 results, which are the last uh, year that we have uh, as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. There are three takeaways that we should uh, take into account as we're looking at the California dashboard. Um, we wanna ensure that quality education um, is defined by more than just one single number. So not just one score, that's why you'll see multiple indicators. Uh, we wanna ensure that equity is being sought for all students. So that's why you'll see different subgroups uh, with different color gauges for each of them. And we're also uh, want to ensure that uh, we're supporting local decision making as we are out analyzing the results of these local indicators. What I'll be sharing with you today is the local indicators that will be part of the 2022 uh, school dashboard for Azusa Unified School District. So the next uh, slide shows us the process in, in this uh, development of the uh, California dashboard and the indicators. Uh, first, we're looking on and we're deciding upon options and gathering data. So what tools are we going to use to uh, measure locally? Uh, some of them are uh, state required uh, tools. We're ensuring that we're including feedback from all educational partners um, and that we're desegregating data to determine our, our needs. Um, next uh, is the one highlighted in red. We're deciding how the district is going to use uh, local indicator results. So we want to identify our areas of strength and our areas of need. Uh, we want to make informed decisions uh, with our planning. And we use uh, these decisions and uh, actually these, this data to inform our LCAP um, in terms of adjustments, revisions, um, goals, actions, and services. Next, we want to make sure that we're reporting on each of the, uh, on each of the indicators uh, to the school board, which is what we're doing tonight. Uh, and then we want to upload this information to the California dashboard for our community to have access. Um, uh, the deadline for uh, the California dashboard to be updated is November 1st, and it's expected um, to be available for public viewing in December. Okay, the next slide is going to take us to uh, the results for each of the priorities. The first priority that we have here are basic services. Um, and this assesses uh, how our district is doing in terms of basic services. Uh, we use our Williams settlement reports to uh, gauge our progress, uh, and we are measuring our progress towards 100%, which is what we want in each of the three areas. The first area is qualified teachers, appropriately assigned teachers. We want to ensure that students have access to standards aligned uh, materials and textbooks for use both at home and at school, and that our facilities are in good repair. Uh, we have 99.9% .9 for qualified teachers. Our textbooks is at 100%, and our facilities is at 82%. Okay, our next uh, priority area is the implementation of state standards. And here, uh, we are using a reflection tool to assess our progress. On the left-hand side, you'll see uh, a scale of one to five that we're using to uh, determine our progress. Uh, level one is exploration and research. Uh, a level two is at the beginning phase. A level three is initial implementation of uh, standards in this case. 
Uh, a level four would be full implementation and a level five would be full implementation and also sustainability of uh, state standards. So you can see on the right hand side um, are the five categories that uh, we're measuring and all of our ratings are within level four, full implementation or level five, which is, which is full implementation with sustainability. And these, this is our average for these uh, indicated levels. You'll also note um, that you did receive a uh, local indicator progress report that gives you more details in terms of the specific questions uh, that are asked um, and for the different categories, um, as well as any narratives explaining further each of the state priorities. The next uh, priority uh, three is parent and family engagement. Here, uh, we are also using a self-assessment tool at the district level to gauge how we're encouraging our parents uh, to participate and how we're partnering with them in decision-making. Um, and we're focusing on three areas, which is building relationships between uh, schools and families, uh, building partnerships for students, uh, seeking input for decision-making. Um, we are re also required, like I mentioned earlier, to write a narrative that outlines uh, strengths uh, needs and plans for improvement in each of the areas. And you'll find that um, in your report that is also attached to tonight's uh, board agenda item. Um, some highlights um, in this area include the opportunities that we offer parents for uh, engagement and leadership through uh, opportunities such as uh, superintendent's roundtable, the PAT Plus process, uh, DLAC, school site council, ELAC, and other uh, opportunities at the school sites uh, for parents to participate in the decision-making process and, and, and being engaged in their child's education. Uh, priority number six looks at school climate. Um, and this uh, measure indicates our students' sense of safety and connectedness. Uh, this data comes from our district annual truth, uh, youth truth survey. Um, and here we're looking at the elementary level at a 64% for uh, safety per perception of safety, uh, middle school at 62, high school at 54, a uh, sense of connectedness, elementary at 59, middle school at 52, and high school at 41. So elementary level is, uh, their percentages are the highest amongst the three levels. The next uh, area of priority is uh, priority seven, which is access to broad course of study. Here, uh, we are looking at um, elementary and secondary uh, class schedules and master schedules to assess that we're offering our students uh, access to different courses. And we are specifically looking at our English learners and our students with special uh, uh, disabilities to ensure that they have access to these programs as well. Um, courses are offered um, at each of these levels. You'll see that uh, we are at 100% uh, on data on this uh, area of priority. And our, in, when we interpret the data, we see that there's a need to offer extended instructional time, which, for example, would be your zero period or your seventh period. Um, and then also the A through G credits that are available to our students. Um, some of the broad, broad course of studies that are uh, included for our elementary students are English, math, social sciences, visual and performing arts, health, physical education. Uh, for our secondary students, we're looking at English, math, social sciences, science, foreign language, visual and performing arts, applied arts, career technical education, and physical education. And again, we're uh, reporting on the areas of our progress and interpreting the data and then using the data to inform our LCAP. That is um, our, my last slide. Uh, this again gives you an overview of the local indicators that we'll be reporting to the California School Dashboard. Um, in addition, you have the report that goes more into detail in terms of each of the specific areas. And if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer at this time. Are there any comments by board members? Yes, I do have. Um, I want to 
wanted to ask regarding the school safety perception where, um, you know, elementary 64, middle school 62, and high school 54. Do we know why? Because it, it should be higher. This is the where Definitely. I feel kids are not feeling safe. Absolutely. Um, and and uh, part of part of what we need to consider is our return back from uh, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic and student sense of feeling safe. That's that was part of it, making sure that they um, understood that um, we had a plan and we had a, a safety protocol in place for them. For So for some of them coming back, that may have been something that influenced the lower um, responses in this in this area. Um, we've also been exposed to a lot of um, uh, situations, right, that students are aware of. Um, and so that also affects uh, their a sense of safety. So, you know, to respond to that, we want to ensure that our LCAP has um, actions and services that support uh, some of these areas, right? So making sure that we have things like positive uh, behavior and intervention supports for our students. We want to ensure that they have mental health services readily available to them. Um, you know, we have uh, professional learning for our staff uh, to ensure that they are uh, preparing to, to support our students through restorative practices and partnerships with like Western justice. No, but I, I also would like to, and I think it's always been low as far as before the pandemic, if we can maybe get, um, on our board packet, you know, what was the past percent um, moving a forward? Comparison? Yeah, we can provide I'd be that interested to see that because I, if I recall, it's always been very low like that before the pandemic. And Yolanda, do you do you want to do you want her to include also the comparisons to that because they have statewide yes. and national data as well? Yes, please. Uh -huh. Thank you. I don't need. Any other comments by board members? Thank you. Thank you. Sorry about my throat. Moving to item 9.2, approval of the 22-23 local control and accountability plan. May I have a motion? Make a motion to approve. Moved by board member Rodriguez Pena. Is there a second? Second. Second. Seconded by, seconded by board president Greer. Any discussion? Uh, I, I'm not discussion, but I have a, a request. Um, so I know we mentioned it briefly. We talked about it briefly last week. But um, as the dust settles with the, the state budget, right, and then it becomes clear that maybe some of the things that we're, best, we're investing, right, current supplemental concentration dollars on things that now the state's going to be funding, I would like to come back to the board a conversation early on in the year, so when we come back in August, around what those are, what kind of dollars we're talking about, and, and start that discussion about what, you know, what, what adjustments do we make. And I'd like that, that conversation to start at the board level. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, let's go for a vote. And Adrian, are you able to access uh, online voting? All right, let's proceed with a vote. Yes. And the item passes 5-0. Moving to item 9.3, approval of the 22-23 adopted budget. Is there a motion? Moved by second. board member Arianes and seconded by board member Rodriguez Pena. Any discussion? Similarly along those same lines, um, I would like us to have a conversation in August or um, if it makes more sense to wait until we have our um, what, what do we get in September? Which financial report is that? Person room that has our like that has the end of year balances. Um, I'd like to have a conversation. I, I would like it to at the board level for us to understand all the pots of monies that we have. You know, I mean, very clearly, I mean, even like simple like info infographic approach, very clearly, um, the pots of monies that we have one time or ongoing. Um, and I'm talking about like the new investments, right? As well, at understanding like how much has been expended. Right. And a summary of what that has been and how much, you know, how much is left in our plan for those dollars to, to Sabrina's point last week. Right. I think I'm not sure that even we as a board have a handle on all of those investments. And I would like to understand 
where we are with, with those pots of money so that we can be transparent. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, let's move to a vote. And the item passes 5-0. Now we come to item 9.4 on the agenda, uh, Assistant Superintendent of Business Services Contract Amendment. The amendment to the Assistant Superintendent of Business Services Employment Contract extends the term of the contract by one year from June 30, 2024 to June 30, 2025. And the Assistant Superintendent will continue to receive the same salary and fringe benefits as provided in her current contract. There are no other changes to the Assistant Superintendent's contract. May I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Moved by Board Member Arianes and seconded by Board Member Rodriguez-Pena. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, let's move to a vote. And the item passes 5-0. Moving on to item 9.5, Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources Contract Amendment. The amendment to the Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources Employment Contract extends the term of the contract by one year from June 30, 2024 to June 30, 2025. And the Assistant Superintendent will continue to receive the same salary and fringe benefits as provided in his current contract. There are no other changes to the assistant superintendent's contract. May I have a motion? Make a motion to approve 9.5. Moved by board member Rodriguez Pena and seconded by board member Arianes. Is there any discussion? Being none, let's move to a vote. And the item passes 5-0. Item 9.6. Superintendent contract amendment. The amendment to the superintendent's employment contract extends the term of the contract by one year from June 30th, 2024 to June 30th, 2025. And the superintendent will continue to receive the same salary and fringe benefits as provided in his current contract. There are no other changes to the superintendent's contract. And I have a motion. A motion to approve. Moved by board member. Point six. Moved by board member. Rodriguez Pena and seconded by board member Arianes. Any discussion? Being none, let's have a vote. And the item passes unanimously. Moving to item 10.0 or section 10.0 consent calendar. And item 10.1, approval of the consent calendar. May I have a motion? Can I pull items 10.12 and 10.13, please? 10.12 and 10.13. So board member Cruz Gonzalez. So that's the motion to move to yep. pull 10.12 and 10.13. The police department MOUs. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by board member Rodriguez Pena. So my, motion, my motion is to approve the consent calendar pulling items 10.12 and 10.13. So moved and seconded. Second. Is there any discussion? Well, I'm sorry. Let's move to a vote. Uh, first by Cruz Gonzalez and seconded by Rodriguez Pena. Do you need a, a hand vote, Hope, or can we do it online? Sure, we'll wait a moment.
and the item passes 5-0. <clears throat> now moving to section 11.0 items pulled from the consent calendar. 11.1, approval of the agreement between Azusa Unified and the Azusa Police Department. Is there a motion? Make a motion to approve. Is second. Moved by board member Rodriguez Pena and seconded by board member Arianes. Discussion? I just want to point out that the wrong item was pulled up above. It says the one I'm looking at is the is the InterQuest canine. Okay, as long as we're talking about item 11, what was pr previously 10.12. Okay. Okay, again, to be clear, the item that was pulled is was the original 10.2, or I'm sorry, 10.12 agreement between AUSD and Azusa Police Department. So, um, yeah, I can just, I just, I want to speak to this. I think I feel, um, I feel that there are better uses for these dollars than to pay for SROs on campus. There are even better uses for these dollars to partner with the police department on, on being able to provide a safe environment for for our district, I think about our security guards who are concerned that they don't have enough training. Um, and so I, I personally am still opposed and I continue to be opposed to the idea of us having police officers on campus um, and us paying for it for them out of our education dollars. So that's why I pulled the item. And I have to differ on that. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I was only looking this way, so I'll go yeah, that's first. Fine. Sorry. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I have to differ on that because I know, you know, it, it's not only about the police on campus, you know, it's safety, they're educating the students and prevention. And especially by looking at the dashboard, how low, how people are not feeling comfortable. And we need to be honest here. You know, we have parents that are concerned emerging the two high schools. We've already had situations. We can't shy away from that. And I'm like, not, nothing's going to happen. I feel we need to be proactive um, by using the SROs on campus. I don't think the security should handle situations that a police officer is trained to do. Yeah, we can train them, but they're not still, they're not police officers. So I think it's, it's very important that um, we keep the SRO on the campus and spend that funding because I don't want to hear later something happens and we will get sued and pay double because we didn't have the right precautions and we didn't, you know, um, be preventive about having things not happen. Or, or helping us out. Board Member Arenas? I think it's very important that we have the SROs at our school district at the high school. And I'm even, you know, considering to, to bring them to the middle school. With all the school shootings that have been happening throughout our, you know, our, our country, um, local things that have been happening, you know, I get a, get a phone call from, a stu uh, from my student that at the high school, there's not enough um, you know, uh, police, the incidents that happened last week at the high school were just not okay. And one of the things that my student, my daughter said is that I am just so glad to see a police officer here. I feel safe. I think we need to. And, you know, I, I think being in, in, in that, you know, that first day of school at summer school, and it was just really crazy. I'm sure I, I shared that with you guys last week. I, I would not think about this twice, and I would always, always support the SROs at our schools. Thank you. Board Member Cruz Gonzalez. So I just want to um, clarify two things and make it very clear. One, when I suggested that we could use dollars to train our security guard, I was not, I was not implying that we would want them to do anything that a police officer is supposed to do. So I just want to make that very clear. I'm just saying, you know, we heard very clearly, and I think we, we know that there's, there is that need. So. I want to make that very clear. I also just want to make very clear that re research time and time again across the state nationally shows that having an SRO on campus does not make your school safer. In fact, it doesn't make it school safer. And what happens is your arrest rates go up, your, your referrals to police go up, whereas, and, and it doesn't help the culture, the culture that you have in your school is what drives that sort of that safety and the, re the relationships you build. And so a lot of the work around restorative justice is actually more impactful in creating that safe environment that everyone feels safe in than paying for a police officer there. So I just, again, I just, I, I want to, I want to make this, put the, make sure I put the, and I'm happy to share any of this research with anybody who would like to, to, to have it. I, in fact, I'll send it to Arturo and he can share it with the board. 
I have a question regarding that. And, and, and the research is fine, but I want to know at a Susan Unified School District, how many arrests have we had? You know, how many incidents have we had? And, and also, you know, when they're present, they're not only there just to arrest people or there. I've seen them um, give awards to students at, at um, Sierra High School, uh, participate in the tea. At um, Azusa High, they give awards like Student of the Month awards. At Glassstone High School, he would come and speak to the uh, parents. And the parents want to know, you know, why is the cop here? That was their question when I went to a coffee with the principal. And he explained what he does. And if they had any questions at wherever his office is, they can go, you know, and speak to him. And the parents are more comfortable knowing, like, why is he there? Why is a cop part in front of the school? So I've seen them also intermingle with the parents and with the students. And I think it's great because they should not be afraid of the police officer thinking that they're going to just be there to arrest them because that's not what they only do. Do we have any data, um, kind of just speaking to, to what they were both saying um, on how many arrests, you know, how are they engaging with our, our, our community, our school community? Um, are the SROs implementing programs, how they're connecting to, you know, to the students, to the parents? Um, yeah, do, do you guys have any of that data? And I can pull that and organize something for an update for the board. Board President Drew, do you have any comment? No comment. So, yeah, so if we're going to pull data, I, I hope it's not just arrest, but it's more comprehensive because, you know, they have referrals, they have, I, they give kids contracts. I mean, I've heard examples, right? In, in our own... Any further discussion? Um, oh, are we? It's going back and forth. So you need a moment to get the electronic school board to the right item before we vote. All right, so 11.2, the item under that was moved and seconded and discussed Let's move to our vote. Oh, hand vote. Board member Rodriguez Pena? Yes. Board member Cruz Gonzalez? No. Board member Arianes? Yes. Board member or President Greer? Yes. Sabrina Bow, yes. So, hope does this mean that the next item is 11.3? So, item 11.3 approval of the memorandum of understanding between Azusa Unified School District and the city of Covina. May I have a motion? Make a motion to approve. And a second? Moved by Board Member Rodriguez Pena and seconded by Board Member Arianes. Any discussion? So I'll use my opportunity to tag my discussion onto this item. This conversation is clearly very impassioned from many different perspectives, and it is almost exactly the same conversation we had last year. And so I will echo my sentiment from last year that I, I, I don't believe that it is an either or proposition of SO, SROs or no SROs. I think that there are always ways to do more. Certainly, we heard from our campus aides that they, they are begging for additional support. And I think that in our national climate of heightened awareness around school safety in particular, and the youth truth data, what our own staff, you know, on, the, on the ground, everyday staff, um, when we have 2,000 students on a campus, I think providing that additional training is is necessary and should be prioritized and i also think that it's you know, looking at the structure and the process is our vital components of the culture and so i also echo what board member cruz gonzalez is saying uh, around what do these um, artifacts and norms say about our culture and how are they supporting the culture that we want um, and i would ask then 
for um, a presentation, not only a presentation of data, but maybe even a presentation with our law enforcement representatives so we can talk to them as we bring other department heads and chairs here to the board um, so we can have that uh, more robust personal discussion. No other discussion? Then let's move to a vote for 11.3. I'm sorry, Hope, uh, it popped up online. Do you need a hand vote? Okay. So, uh, okay, so the item passes 4-1. Moving to section 12.0, business and finance, Ms. Jamal for item 12.1. Thank you, on board. I would like to introduce um, you all to Catherine Jacob of RBCCM of Capital Markets, who will outline the bond sell. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm Catherine Jacobson from RBC, the district's bond underwriter. Good evening, President Greer, members of the board. Thank you for having me here tonight. I'm happy to report back that the district has uh, had a very successful bond sale a few weeks ago. Uh, that wrapped up its Measure K bond authorization that voters approved back in 2014. If you recall, the, the measure was for $92 million. Uh, just a few weeks ago, we sold the final $14 million in bonds. The, the district really nailed the timing of the bond sale. If you've been tracking the financial markets this year, it's been extremely volatile. And the district actually was able to lock in rates at a dip in the market. Uh, that resulted in your taxpayers uh, paying a borrowing cost of just 3.63%. On the day we sold bonds, we had $73 million in orders from investors, which is five times the amount of bonds you were selling. And it was able to save the district an additional $130,000, I believe, uh, in interest cost. Um, and some really nice investor names, PIMCO, Allstate, Franklin, um, and if you've been looking recently, just the past few weeks, rates have spiked back up. So uh, you uh, at least half a percent from when you locked in rates. So really good timing and a really great way to wrap up the funding for Measure K. I'm happy to answer any questions. Any comments by board members? Thank you so much. You're welcome. Moving to section 13.0, curriculum and instruction, 13.1, approval of the agreement between Azusa Unified and the city of Azusa. May I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Moved by board member Arianes and seconded by board member Rodriguez Pena. Any discussion? Yeah, I have a question. Oh, oh, go ahead. I, was just gonna say, I think it's great that we are partnering more and more with the city of Azusa and, um, you know, there's many things that they can help us and we could help them because we all serve the same students in our community. And I want to thank the city of Azusa. Board member Cruz Gonzalez. Yeah, I had a question. Um, and just, I mean, it's probably a simple answer. So I think the agreement is for up to $150,000. And then the actual estimate that I read, like the actual, like when you look at the exhibit, it says they estimate it's going to cost total. Um, Oh no, I guess it is one. Okay, no, I didn't. I did bad math. Okay, so I'm super excited that um, we are going to have an opportunity to um, have kids, especially participate in the aquatics program. Right, I think that's really wonderful. Um, and I want us to think about because I think Ed could actually in there that everyone ignores is actually a requirement that students learn how to swim. Right, so I want us to think about like how do we embed this kind of opportunity maybe throughout the year so that every child in our district has an opportunity to swim, you know, whether we pick a certain grade or do something where, so that we can. And when then we right now, we have these expanded learning opportunity funds for the foreseeable future. We can think about how do we embed that through a partnership with if the city's willing embed that with, with the city um, to, um, to do this. I also wanted to say, I hope that we start thinking about our swim team at Gladstone, right? which is now going to be shifting over to Zusa and thinking about like, how do we use that beautiful pool there? I know, I think you guys are probably talking about it, but so, so I'm super excited. Um, 
I think there's a lot of opportunity, like Yolanda said, to expand. You know, I'm just thinking about like our after school sports programs. You know, I have my son enrolled in it. I learned how to play sports through Zusa Parks and Rec. You know, thinking about um, how do we how do we make this accessible? And, when, and it's something that doesn't necessarily compete with Think Together, right? So thinking about like, how do we layer things on? But just super excited about, about this opportunity that, that it's happening. Good question. Do, 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 we, do we still partner with the CBD G grant after school uh, tutoring? Thank you for that question. Uh, we actually reallocated the CDPG funding. Um, it's still related to, to youth that participate in our programs, but it's actually more for supportive services for kids that have additional needs. Um, so that's really how we're doing it now. We're trying to um, take recreation and sports activities and broaden uh, the kinds of services that we offer when engaged with students and we see a need for other kinds of services, such as mental health services, management, or family services. So we're actually taking those funds and using them in that way. So we are taking a deeper look, a deeper dive into the structure of our department, in particular community resources, to see how we can better serve uh, youth and families. I, I, I just see like two, three hour conversation. Looking forward to it. Thank Good you. word when you said deeper dive. Products. Ah. Thank you. Any further discussion? Board President Greer, any comment? All right. So the item has been moved and seconded. Let's move to our vote. And the item passes 5 0. Moving to section 14.0, Human Resources. 14.1, public hearing of the California School Employees Association. Sunshine proposal for the 22-23 fiscal year negotiations with Azusa Unified. May I have a motion? Make a motion to approve 14.1. Moved by board member Rodriguez Pena and seconded by board member Arianes. The public hearing is now open. Are there any, are there any members of the public either in person or in Zoom attendance that wish to make comments during this public hearing? Lika, anyone on Zoom? We have no one on Zoom. Thank you. And so the public hearing opened at 8.02 p.m. The public hearing will now close at 8.02 p.m. Moving to item 14.2, public hearing vote for the vote, vote on it. There's action on it. Then. Um, I think that the action was to, to open have the, the public hearing. Yeah. Oh, there was no vote to open. Oh, I think you. I'm sorry. We're the first. Sorry. Yes. Let's rewind 30 seconds. So we had a first and a second to open public hearing. Uh, let's have a vote before we open the public. So the motion passed to open the public hearing. Somehow it's still 8:02 p.m. Are there any members of the public uh, in? Person or online? All right, we are frozen in time. Uh, do I now? Do I need a, a motion to close, or can we close? All right. So now we'll now close the public hearing at eight o three p.m. So that we all lived through that minute together. Uh, moving to item fourteen point two, public hearing of the Azusa Educators Association, the AEA, Sunshine proposal for the twenty two twenty three fiscal year negotiations with Azusa Unified. May I have a motion to open the public hearing. Second, moved by board member Arianes and seconded by board member Rodriguez Pena. Any discussion? Seeing none, let's vote. The public hearing has been approved 5 0 at 8 03 p.m. The public hearing is now open. Any members of the public in person? Or online? Lika, is everyone online? We have no hands raised on Zoom. Thank you. And now we'll go ahead and close this public hearing for 14.2 at 8.04 p.m. 
I'll get really good by the end of this. Mm -hmm. uh, 14.3, public hearing of the Azusa Unified Sun Sunshine proposal for the 22-23 fiscal year negotiations with California School Employees Association, CSEA, may have a motion to approve the public hearing. Motion to approve 14.3. Second. Moved by board member Arianes and seconded by board member Rodriguez Pena. Seeing no discussion, let's vote. And the motion passes 5-0 to open the public hearing at 8.04. Are there members of the public in person or on Zoom attendance for this item? We have no hands raised on Zoom. Thank you, and no one in person. We now conclude the public hearing for 14.3 at 8.05 p.m. 14.4, approval of the Azusa Unified School District Sunshine proposal for the 22-23 fiscal year negotiations with the California School Employees Association. May I have a motion to approve? Approve 14.4. Second. Moved by board member Rodriguez. I'm sorry, moved by board member Arianes and seconded by board member Rodriguez Pena. Any discussion? Seeing none, let's move to a vote. And the item passes unanimously. 14.5, public hearing of the Azusa Unified Sunshine proposal for the 22-23 fiscal year negotiations with Azusa Educators Association. May I have a motion to open the public hearing? Make a motion to approve 14.5. And is there a second? I'll second. Moved by board member Rodriguez Pena and seconded by board member Cruz Gonzalez. Any discussion? We'll move to a vote to open the public hearing for 14.5. And the item passes 5-0. The public hearing for 14.5 is now open at 8.06 p.m. Calling once, calling twice for members of the public in person or online. Lika, do we have anyone online? We have no hands raised on Zoom. Thank you. The public hearing for 14.5 is now closed at 8.06 p.m. We'll get there, guys. 14.6, approval of the... Azusa Unified Sunshine proposal for the 22-23 fiscal year negotiations with Azusa Educators Association, AEA. May I have a motion? Motion to approve, 14.6. Second. Moved by board member Arianes and seconded by board member Rodriguez Pena. Any discussion? Seeing none, let's move to a vote. And the item passes unanimously. Item 14.7, approval of the 2022 through 2025 collective bargaining agreement between the Azusa Unified School District and Azusa Educators Association, CTA, NEA, all under the AEA heading. May I have a motion? Motion to approve 14.7. Moved by board member Rodriguez Pena and seconded by board member Arianes. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, we'll move to a vote. And the item passes unanimously. Moving on to the final item on our agenda, adjournment 15.1. May I have a motion to adjourn? Make a motion uh, to approve 15.1. Moved by board member Rodriguez Pena and seconded by board member Arianes. Any discussion? Hearing none, let's move to a vote. The motion to adjourn passes unanimously. This meeting is adjourned at 8.08 p.m. Thank you, Azusa, and have a great night.